G'day and welcome to a recording of the Podcasting 101, a profitable marketing strategy workshop presented by myself, the video confidence coach and Dr. Jürgen Strauss of Innova Biz. We begin our recording after the housekeeping notes and everyone introducing themselves to the group. So sit back and relax and listen to Podcasting 101, a profitable marketing strategy workshop that was recorded on the 28th of the 8th, 2019. Enjoy. About us. So I'm Jürgen, my business is Anova Biz. And why are we talking to you about podcasting? Because I run the Anova Buzz podcast, which I think we're at episode 226. I can't remember because we've got about a dozen recordings ready to edit and, and upload. So I sort of lose count of it. Um, interview podcast. I also do the Tales of Marketing Transformation, which is a solo show. Zoe is video confidence coach. She has a do video podcast that, how many episodes have you got? Confidence coach. She has a do video podcast. That, and I also produce a range of podcasts for clients and I've put four examples up there. After the waiting room is um, Shane Sullivan who does, she looks after carers and people who are seriously ill and spending a lot of time in waiting rooms. Um, Tom Vergus, who does Leading with Cultural Intelligence, he's a fabulous guy that's got expertise in all things diversity. Um, Destiny Pursuit, which is an NLP Matters, the NLP Matters podcast, and the, par- the Business of Parenting with Lisa Taylor. They're kind of ones that we've been producing for a little while. So, you know, we produce podcasts, we run our own podcasts, and it's a big part of both of our businesses. Mm. Hi, Zoe. You may have seen me in the emails saying hi. Some of you have seen at previous workshops. Um, It might be surprising that a video confidence coach is teaching about podcasting, but the two are very closely linked and you'll see why as we go through today. So who has listened to a podcast? Almost everybody. (laughs) So who's made a phone call? Made a phone call. Made a phone call. <laughs> Pretty well everybody, right? So you've already mastered the technology of podcasting. <laughs> Seriously, that's, that's about as complicated as it gets. Yes, you can do a whole lot of other stuff, but it really is just grabbing a recording device like a phone, making a recording, uploading that recording somewhere so that it's public. Of course, there's lots of details underneath that and there's a way to do it really well. So that's hopefully what we're here to talk about. Now, podcasting has probably been around since the early 2000s, maybe before that, but in the early 2000s, and I forgot to bring it with me, I've got one at home, these little iPods. Those of you who are approaching my age will probably remember them. Um, You used to have to have this special device to to listen to them. And they kind of took off like a rocket initially and then they faded away a little bit. And then they've really kicked off in the last perhaps four or five years as a result of mobile phones, smartphones. Because on any device, any smartphone device now you can upload about 5,000 different apps to listen to a podcast. So I don't even know how many apps there there are. I've got about eight or nine on my phone. This is one of the apps I use a lot, and it's my main screen of the podcasts I listen to. That's only about a quarter of the screen. So there's lots of podcasts out there. I think the uh, How That Works podcast is on there somewhere. Um, How I Built This is another one that's done by the same people, I think. But there's podcasts around all sorts of things, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's podcasts about photography, which you know relates to what Zoe was saying about wondering whether a video coach would benefit from podcasting. So there's people that do podcasts on photography. So Seth Godin said that everybody should have a podcast for the simple reason that it 
kind of helps you crystallize your thinking and get your thoughts out into the world and start important conversations. So Seth Godin has the Akimbo podcast, which is well worth listening to. If you're a Seth Godin fan, it's definitely worth listening to. And one of his aims in the podcast is really just to prompt people to think and to create stuff. And the other thing I really like about podcasts, it gives you a license to talk to anybody that normally wouldn't even bother to give you the time of day. And the story that I like to share with you is, um, okay, before I get on to that, so if you want to get a meeting with somebody that you know, you're not sure that they'll say, yes, I'll have a meeting with you, you know, the traditional, can I buy your coffee and pick your brain, because that's really a little disrespectful as well. But if you say, would you like to come on my podcast? I've got a podcast that goes out into the world. I've got this many um, listeners and subscribers, and you know, I do all this sharing later on. Most people will say yes even somebody like the famous Michael E. Gerber. So who knows, or who knows old Michael Gerber? Yeah, so he wrote all the E-Myth book. He's known as the father of systems, um, modern entrepreneurialism. And he's about 82 years old now. Um, a couple of years ago, he launched the E-Myth Revisited, um, his latest book. And I was lucky enough to get onto a book ambassadors program to help promote that book. And so I thought, well, if I'm on that, I'm gonna ask him to come on the podcast because I'm doing him a favor. And he said, yes. Now, can you imagine spending an hour talking to Michael E. Gerber and asking him a whole bunch of questions that I wanna know answers to? What would I have to pay for that normally? I mean, probably tens of thousands of dollars. At yeah. But, what happened, I got him on episode 54 of the Innova Buzz podcast. If you want to listen to it, you can still check it out. Michael E. Gerber, we had a fabulous conversation. It was, I was kind of really nervous to start with, but I think I settled down and we had a great conversation. I remember him telling me at the end, I have this question about what's the difference between, no, sorry, what, what do you need to do to, what does anyone need to do to be more innovative is my question. And he said, you're asking the wrong question. You should be saying, well, here's the difference between innovation and creativity. And then he went on a bit of a rant. And I was like, oh, wow. But it was just golden. And since, since then, or even before then, so this is just a little collage. I couldn't fit all the people on here. As I say, over 226 or whatever episodes, um, some of those have been solo, but over, well over 220 guests, I think, that I've had on the episode and some of the people you might recognize there. So the beauty is I get to have nearly an hour's masterclass each time. Sometimes they go on for longer because people get really excited and they keep telling me things and they say, oh, I should tell you about this story as well or I should go back to that question before because I've got another thought. And I get to share it with my audience, which is great as well. So today I was talking to a chap about sales and I asked a whole bunch of questions that I've been talking to my clients about recently about sales. And I've also been talking to my business coach about sales and saying, you know, you, you should learn to do sales better. So I asked this guy who was a sales trainer a whole lot of questions. So I got a free hours masterclass. And again, I get to share that when we publish it. And all of that I can do at low cost. I don't have to travel anywhere. So I can do it online with anyone in the world. So most of these people are international from here. I have had Geelong people on the podcast, but they've only been three, if I remember rightly, probably half a dozen Melbourne people, but a lot of overseas people. I get to share my message because I can put an interpretation on what they tell me. And of course, I get to ask the questions. So I get to steer it. I want to know about this. Can you tell me more about that? Also, it helps me build my authority and credibility because I'm the host of a podcast now. I've been to conferences where um, the only reason I went there was I wanted to see something different. I wanted to be inspired by something that was totally outside my area of expertise. And I thought, you know, if I see how these people do stuff, I might come up with some ideas. 
there was no reason for me to be there. And also when I went into the conference to register, it was like, are you a, like one example was the automotive refinish conference. So, you know, crash repairers. So they said, you know, are you a um, crash repair shop? Are you a supplier of automotive refinished products? Are you um, a panel beater? I don't know what else there was. And the other one was press. So I said, I'm press. I have a podcast. Oh, right. Go. Yeah. So I got in there. So you can go and go to conferences and learn new things simply by being a podcaster. Of course, growing your online audience is a big thing. So marketing, yeah, um, is a big thing. Um, but, you know, having the podcast itself already helps you grow an online audience and particularly if you're doing interviews because the guests that you have on will also share your podcast. It allows you to build relationships with lots of people, with the guest, with more listeners. Um, and so I've grown my network through the podcast as well. And it does lead to leads and sales. It is a business tool. So I've got, so some of the podcasts that we produce have come from podcast guests that I've had on. We do newsletters, we um, work on other marketing programs for guests that we've had on our podcast. So tomorrow morning I'm coaching a chap who I'm helping with marketing. He was a guest on my podcast as well. So it is a business tool. So I guess for me, I'm really convinced you can benefit from podcasting. Everybody can benefit from podcasting. So hopefully you can see that now too and you're starting to get some ideas and visualize some ways that you can benefit by podcasting and you know some of you are already doing that. So I'm gonna hand the clicker to yes. Zoe to talk a little bit more about. But with podcasting, essentially why podcasting has become so fervent and so rampant in Australia, but around the world recently, is because a podcast is a series of audio or video files, essentially what it is. And because podcasts can be easily downloaded, downloaded or streamed on your mobile, on your computer, on your tablet, on your ham radio if you really want to, I'm not sure how you would do that, but I'm sure there's a way. It's so accessible to, abs to everyone to gain access to your content. And because, well, like I said, it's available on any device, no one really has a hindrance to be able to consume your message and consume your content. And also it's on demand. So whenever it's uploaded to the world, anyone can get access it until you delete it or see otherwise. Now for people that aren't here on behalf of a business, you may not inherently see the reason as to why you might be creating a podcast if it's not for monetary gain or for generating leads or any of the cool business stuff that business owners in the room can feel my pain. Um, the reason that you would do this as a benefit to yourself or to your hobbies or the reason that you might be doing it is because is it allows you to benefit the, uh, the end user, benefit the listener, benefit the viewer, because you're helping them learn how to achieve something. You're solving a problem. You're helping them achieve something with your podcast, or you're just letting them know about your life, that too. You could totally be a Instagram influencer with a podcast. And if you want to pull that off, you can. I'm not stopping you. But that gives you another reason to give you that confidence that if you can talk into a microphone for, you know, 20 minutes once a week, you've got the confidence to talk to absolutely everyone and anyone. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, but because you're building a podcast, it's not just a one-off piece of content. You're not creating one episode. Here is my beautiful piece of audio. It's 20 minutes long. Bye. See ya. Mm -hmm. Don't contact me again. Bye. You're not doing that. You're constantly creating content over, you know, a series of weeks, months, even years like Jürgen's, for example. So you'll be able to create your own platform of content that you'll have in the bank. And also, you'll be able to create your platform to then do bigger and better things. Um, there are plenty of um, podcasts out there that are start off quite small, and then as soon as they developed a following, were able to, for example, one I can mention off the top of my head is, um, bleep it out later in post, Zoe, Weird in Australia. <laughs> it's a great podcast that you learn about all the interesting stories about Australi Australians past and present. How stupid, how stupid some of us are, but it's still entertaining. But from there, they've been able to build a podcasting empire 
of that one podcast they create. And because it's your content, you're creating it, hopefully you get to promote your ideas and your message, again, for business and for personal. But because you're doing it for the benefit of the listener, viewer at the other end, you're being able to provide value tenfold as opposed to just meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, hello, helped you for five minutes, goodbye. You're not doing that, you're, you're constantly being able to provide that helpful content and be able to actually help people over a long period of time. Now, look at our lovely seven step plan. Don't be overwhelmed, it's okay, it's okay. We've broken down the process of going through a podcast all the way, I know I have a clicker, um, all the way from step one, so the plan, figuring out what you're doing, Step two, the tech, which is surprisingly easy. Step three, episodes, figuring out, okay, I've, I, I've, I know what I'm gonna say and I know how I'm gonna do it. Now it's time to create that pattern effect of creating multiple pieces of content. And then actually doing it. So actually, actually recording it, editing it, which is surprisingly easy by the way, and publishing it so people can access it online. And then launching it, being able to press the button and go, I'm ready, are you ready, go! No one laughed at that, okay. Um, <laughs> and then making sure that after you press that launch button, the rocket's in the sky. <sighs> like, it actually keeps going. It just, doesn't, it just doesn't stop. Like, it actually keeps going. Because there's plenty of people out there. Has anyone ever seen those podcasts that's maybe, you know, six or seven podcasts long and then it kind of stops? And then, you know, it's over six years old and nothing's happened to it? That surprisingly happens a lot. And keeping up that momentum is the best advantage for you to be able to reach more people, but also it makes you look better. That's an added bonus. No, that's not the only reason, just saying. An added bonus. It works. Yeah. Which one's your section? <laughs> so you've seen seven, seven steps, and the first one is the plan, which is really important. So we need to know, what are we going to talk about? What's our topic? Who's our audience? Who are we talking to? what's our message to them and as Zoe mentioned consistency so I think I say this later on in the presentation but seven episodes is is a magic number there's there's hundreds of thousands of podcasts that get up to episode seven or eight and then they just stop so with the topic the first thing so if you have a look at the um, workbook that we have on your sheet. There's a podcast planning worksheet there and it starts off with first of all who's your audience? Well first of all what, what are we doing? Which is like what's your message? What exactly are you putting out there? So you know it's a radio show that you're repurposing into a podcast and the reason for doing that. So you would have a reason for doing that and then the next bit is really important and there's a, a, what's called an empathy map there on the right hand side that we've drawn and that's to determine the niche. Who is it that you're talking to? But we wanna know a lot more about those people than you know, they're 50 years old and they drive a, a Mercedes and they live in uh, rich suburbs or they might be um, people that are in the um, gay and, uh, what is it, GLBTI community. And you wanna know a lot more than just those demographic things. You wanna know what, what are some of their concerns? What keeps them awake at night? What drives them? What do they have as needs? So I think you know, from listening to you guys before, you've got a lot of that already. Um, but a lot of people put out a message and say, well, we're talking to, um, women that are interested in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But you really want to get to a much more level of detail there to, to start to feel that connection so that when you get on the recording, people listen to you and they immediately say, I like her, I'm going to listen again. Not just because I'm interested in the topic, but because I really like her and I feel connected. So that's why you're doing this to start with. Then we work on looking at what your promise is. So this is around the message. So how are you going to change the listener? 
So when they give you their time because they're spending time with you, they're not spending any money because most podcasts are free, but they're spending time with you. And time's a non-renewable resource and you want to respect that. So what are they going to get by spending their time with you? So be really clear in articulating that. Then for a new podcast, we want to come up with a name. And with a name, you want to have something that's memorable, easy to remember, easy to spell. My Innova Buzz podcast probably doesn't fit a lot of those because people have trouble with it. I thought I was being clever. Don't try and be clever. So don't do what I did early on. I learned that. But now that it's established and it's got a following, I'm not going to change that. So Tales of Marketing Transformation is about stories that help you transform your marketing. So it's, a, it, it's not a real imaginative title, but it tells you what you get. So if you see that title and you say, no, not interested in that, that's fine. So I haven't wasted your time. But if you say, yep, I'm really interested in that, then when you listen, you know that's what you're getting. Megan, can I ask, is there, do you just have one podcast with all your episodes or do you have multiple podcasts covering different themes and episodes in each of them? There's a number of ways you can do that. So um, it depends. I mean, my suggestion for anybody that hasn't done podcasting before is start with one and, and build a theme. So what's the theme? Who's the audience? And then you could build topics underneath that. So we'll talk a little bit later about planning the individual episodes. And then some people do seasons. So they might do a season of, say, three months where they publish every week or whatever their frequency is for three months. Then they have a month or two off. And then they come back and they do season two and season three and so on. And what they do is they tell their listeners, this is season one. And at the end of season one, okay, this is the last episode of season one. We're going to take a break for a couple of months. We'll be back in two months with season two. So the listeners know that's the frequency. And that's fine. So some people do that and that way they get to refresh themselves and they don't get into this constant podcasting. When I first started with an overbuzz, I was under a lot of pressure because I was living week to week and I had no, I kind of every week I'd think Friday is when I published and often I got to Thursday and I didn't actually have stuff ready. So it was a mad scramble. So you don't want to be in that because at some point you start to resent doing it with that until we got to the point of now we've got a wait list of people wanting to get on the podcast. We've, I get about five emails a week of people asking to be on the podcast. So whilst we invite people, we also get asked. And um, we've got a backlog of about 10 episodes recorded. So every time I do an episode, I know, you know it's going to be two months before that's published. So we've got plenty of time to do all the editing stuff. Published. So we've got plenty of time to do all the editing stuff. <laughs> Somebody gave me a fabulous answer to that the other day and I could, couldn't remember what it was, but however long it is, is the right length of time. Um, there's different, different schools of thought on this and um, some people say 15, 20 minutes because that's a typical commute. So a lot of people listen in cars while they're driving. So that's kind of a typical commute. Other people say that shorter than that even is better. Um, and then others say that, hey, if you've got value, then it doesn't matter how long. So what's the podcast? There's one podcast that goes for about four hours episode, and it's really popular. Yes. I just don't remember the name of it. Remember the name of it. So the timing being consistent, so should you make a plan that I'm going to do 20 minute podcast? No, no, I just, that's not, I don't think that's important. I think if you do one that's 10 minutes and then the next one's an hour and then there's another one 15 minutes, I think that would be inconsistent. Yeah. But if you did one that's 20 minutes and the next one was 30 and yeah. then there's another one 30 minutes and 20, I think that would be fine. Yeah. I, Really, the key thing is having the content that is exceptionally valuable to your audience. And then if, you know, if the content's exceptionally valuable, they'll listen. Um, and the thing is, you can stop. These apps are really smart. 
So you can stop. If you've got a 15-minute commute in the car and you listen to a podcast and you get halfway through the podcast, you just turn it off. And when you drive home from work that evening, it'll resume at that point and it'll just keep going. It's a bit like audio books. You know, the audio book, you just stop it when you've had enough and next time you listen, it'll resume from that point. And the next bit you need is a description, a description for the podcast because that will, is what will show up in the directories. So the directories will show the name and the description and when people find that podcast, that's what will let them know that it's either of interest to them or not. So yeah, so that's, that's kind of the first step is really plan it. And if you go through this exercise, there's, this is actually extremely valuable. And a lot of people just jump in and have an idea and then get started. This is really valuable, particularly that empathy map, because if you look at that empathy map in terms of developing an understanding of what your audience might need, what their concerns might be, what their aspirations are, and start to list those out and brainstorm and maybe even talk to people who you, you want to um, entertain or educate on your podcast, that will give you a whole lot of episode and content ideas moving forward when you get to the stage of planning each individual episode. So step two is the tech, and I'm going to let Zoe talk about the complex Here's subject. The tech, and I'm going to let Zoe talk Beautiful. about the complex subject. But one thing I did forget to mention before I handed it off to Jürgen was on that third page, when you open up the booklet, there's a podcast pitch template. So this is a template that I give to a lot of my clients, and I'm sure now that Jürgen has it, he'll give it to his clients too. It allows you to use the information that you used on the first page, so that information that you thought heavily about, you thought about, okay, who is my audience? Why should they care? And you're able to put that information into a nice, succinct, maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, to be able to pitch your podcast to a potential listener. Um, and this pitch template people use as trailers or if you've ever watched a po or if, watched, if you've ever listened to a podcast and the first episode is like two minutes or like significantly tiny compared to all the other episodes it's because it's that first episode that they put out onto their hosting channel and put the, into their podcast as cement that it's starting but it also allows people to tell people hey instead of listening to four hours of our podcast episode why don't you check out our trailer or our podcast pitch to see if you're going to want to listen to us because if you can't listen to us for two minutes good chance you're not going to listen to us for four hours so i just wanted to point that out to you so you guys can use that in the future as a good starting point for when you're ready to go with your podcast you've got a little pitch template to get you started so moving on to that third page you'll have a nice little list of our prickly little subject here so who feels a little overwhelmed by the idea of tech or the idea of like, what am I, how am I going to do this? Good. Let's dash that for you, shall we? <laughs> so what I'm going to talk about is breaking down essentially what a podcast is, as Jürgen mentioned at the start of today, was essentially a podcast is being able to record, um, bring, to record the audio, capture the audio, and then edit it and kick it out there is essentially what you're doing with a podcast. So to break it down, what we need in regards to physical things that we need to get going is we need a microphone, a thing to record our voice, a computer or a mobile phone to capture that audio, just so we're not talking out into the ether, and um, using that same computer or mobile to then upload that audio. Probably edit it along the way, but you can go raw if you really want to, if you don't think you have said anything bad in the meantime. But what I want to get you guys to look at today, on, this, on the page, you've got examples of microphones. Um, we haven't provided any examples of laptops because most of us already have either a laptop or a desktop computer that we can use. Um, and I'll tell you now that most um, computers, no matter how cheap, no matter how old they are, can um, record a microphone. And if, it can't, and if your computer can't, you might need to update it because I have a slight feeling you've got a lot more problems than trying to record audio with it. 
but on this page, you'll see a few um, a few recommendations that me and Jürgen have. But like I said, essentially in regards to equipment, let's just put the computer to the side. We've already got one of those. We can all picture it in our head, sitting at home, under the car, like mine is at the moment. I don't mean under the car, I mean in the seat, in the car. Um, and what we need to look at is getting a microphone. So you most of the time, or especially when you're getting started, the best microphone to get um, is an Audio-Technica. They're a good brand. They don't make terrible products. And because it's a USB microphone, you can plug it straight into your computer, um, download Audacity, which is that little um, software in the middle. Audacity is a free open source software available on Windows, Macs, and Linux. Anyone use Linux? Thank God. Um, <laughs> But Audacity is a free software that people from, you know, you, um, you use that? Yeah. So um, Jürgen and I use Audacity all the way from professionals who have, you know, long hour podcasts use Audacity because it's a free program. It's really easy to use. And there's a lot of tutorials out there on how to use it. So it's just a um, program that you download on a laptop. Um, because it's a free software that you download, if you, want to, if you have any extra change to donate, highly recommend it. So if you be able to invest in a Audio, Te Audio Technica or a Rode, um, Rode po Podcaster, yeah, Rode Podcaster microphone, most of the time, as Mark says, you won't need to edit it unless you need to heavily take bits out of the audio. But uh, the reason I recommend Audacity to most of my clients and to you guys today is because it's a really easy program to get started and it's kind of hard to break when I say break, I mean pressing a wrong button and things go wrong, but you can always go back and fix it. So now that we've gotten your fears a little bit elated in regards to, okay, what tech do I need? You need a microphone, computer, beautiful. Internet is also a plus, or access to internet is also a plus. Now, we've already, fit, we've already gone through a little bit of the, okay, I've already thought about what my podcast is about, who am I doing it for, and a little bit of the pitch that you've had a look at as to how you're actually going to go about doing it. Now let's figure out how to get it off your computer or your mobile phone to the world. No drama, love it. <laughs> so we're going to talk about hosting. So hosting is very much like the example I've got in the booklet is, is like having a book in a library. So your podcast, you've created your little file, your little um, you know, MP3, your little web file. Don't worry, that's just audio files out there. And now you need to give it to a library, you need to give it to a hosting platform for them to distribute to all the players to be able to, for people to be able to download. Am I feeling the room on that one? Mm -hmm. Good, good. If my, if my metaphors are too complex, let me know. And these platforms do a couple of things for you. They hold your... Um, little, you know, your podcast episode in on their servers, on their, you know, on their libraries in the cloud. So then, whenever iTunes, um, Stitcher, uh, whenever these other places need to access your podcast because someone wants to download it, they've got instant access and they're able to download it straight away and listen to it within thirty seconds, tops. But to do that, you guys have to log in and create an account. Now, below at the bottom of the page, you'll see a few examples that um, Jürgen, and I, Jürgen and I have used. Um, and they're all, uh, most of them are played platforms. Um, you can see Wooshka is a um, free platform, but it does have caveats in that sense. I've forgotten why Wooshka's free, but... It's a platform, but it does have caveats mm. in that sense. Forgotten why yes, so there's on um, so when something is um, free like Wushka, there's a limit to the amount of people that can download and listen to your podcast. But um, I highly recommend that if you are going to take podcasting seriously and you can see yourself, you know, starting now and you know not finishing in like three months, actively keep doing it over a period of time, then I highly recommend investing in a hosting platform to host your podcast. Actively keep doing it over a period of time, then I highly recommend investing in a hosting yeah, platform. Yeah, so most, um, most of these platforms that are allowed below do have free, um, do have free options. It's just say, for example, you upload your podcast and it will um, be deleted from their service in 90 days. Mm. So it's one of those things of, like, you can give it a shot, but if you're, but say for example, if you give it a shot and you find out you don't like it and you know, no one's listening to me and no one likes it, then you can just let it delete itself and go away. 
most of these platforms have a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. So even if you go, as Zoe suggests, go for a professional one, because the professional ones also will give you a lot more statistics on the download so that if you want to track you know, what's happening and how your audience is growing, mm -hmm. that's always useful. But if at any stage you decide, no, I don't want to keep doing this, well, then you just stop paying, so it's... Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's yeah. not a lifetime... No, no. Do they help you get an audience? Do some of them help you more than ah, others to great find question. people? So Captivate... F Definitely, I'd say like Captivate um, FM. Captivate FM is a brand new one. They're still in beta at the moment. They're, I'm in the beta program, but I haven't got access yet. I get access tomorrow. From all that I've read, they do a lot of stuff to help you grow the audience. Mm -hmm. But it's the only one I know of. Now, there is another one that promises that, but I haven't re they haven't really given a lot of information about what they do, so I've never explored that one. So the ones that are on the sheet are the ones that we've tried ourselves. So there's a lot of um, platforms out there. You know, they all want your money at some point or another. Um, the platforms themselves, I think it's a... Um, most platforms do the right thing of being able to, you know, distribute a podcast. They make sure it works. And um, when you, if you pay enough, you get the right statistics and you make sure it's always there. Um, but most of the places don't really have their own. They have their own communities online, like, say, Facebook groups and um, other places like that. But uh, except for Captivate, um, Captivate.fm, I, I haven't really found any of them to be actively marketing on your behalf. Yes? Okay, so they're the hosting and you can be accessed via listeners on different platforms, like you said, yes. iTunes, whatever. How do people access on your website? Is there a way you can have your podcast available to be downloaded directly from your website? Yes. So um, most of these, um, um, so most the hosting platform, and then it goes out and gives it to iTunes and those places. A lot of, um, like say for example, at the moment I'm currently looking at a Spotify plugin. So um, what you can do is when you have your website, you go to Spotify, get an embed code, a whole long list of, of code and put it into your website and able to have a Spotify like player within your website. And most um, outward platforms do have an, um, a player within. It's just a bit hit and miss in regards to if it's playing nice with your website code and if it breaks, does it get fixed? But these these platforms, the hosting platforms that we've listed here, all of them have players that you can embed on your website as well. So you, that's the way I do it. I actually get the code from the host and embed that in the website. Yeah, because we've got a bit drafted. Yeah, website. yeah. And that's, you know, that's would be my recommendation as well for marketing reasons. I'm sorry, I pressed the button. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it doesn't matter which host you use, anyone in the world, that's whatever right. Whatever method yeah. they're using will access it. But yeah. we just yeah. need this. Yeah. So we'll talk. We'll talk. So I think we're due for a break now, a short break, but we'll talk after the break about what the next step is, which is to send it out to all these directories. So what. Zoe was mentioning um, iTunes or Apple Podcasts as they're now known, um, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, um, Spotify. They're all directories, if you like, that, um, and, and they're also apps where people can listen. But the important thing is that you've got to make sure you're in those directories. Yes, no. So um, the one thing that's mentioned in this booklet is the most important thing to get from a, post, um, a hosting platform is an RSS feed. So that is a quick link that says RSS dash dot blah, 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 and a whole list of numbers. And what this does, it enables you to give this link to um, um, Apple Podcasts, to Spotify, to Acast, to Stitcher, to blah, 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 gives them a long link that they can use to access your podcast and access, access your directory. If a um, hosting platform is not going to give you an RSS feed, do not touch it. Just drop, let it go. Some of, some of these hosts make it quite easy. Um, I know Omni Studio and Wooshka um, and Blueberry, Buzzsprout, I don't know, and Captivate, I don't know yet, but those three inside your account and your podcast um, page 
it'll have buttons to go to the major things. So it'll say, you know, submit to iTunes, submit okay. to mm -hmm. Google Podcasts, submit to Spotify. Stitcher is the one that, because of the way they operate, you have to do the technical stuff because mm -hmm. they don't allow that. But So step three now is the episodes. And again, the place to start with this is structuring your episodes and I think you know if you're coming from radio this is probably really valuable for you because I think this structure works really well for podcasts but it's probably different to um, what a typical radio show might be so the typical structure is you have a show intro and a show outro and that will be at the beginning and the end of every episode so that you do that once. Often that will be with like underlying music. It may be somebody else. So if you're the host, it may be another voice. So if you listen to uh, My Tales of Marketing Transformation podcast, there's actually a lady who's voicing the intro and the outro. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember yours. Do you voice your own? Yeah. Yeah. So, so in, in, um, in Overbuzz, I've voiced my own because somebody else is doing most of the talking during the episode. So there's the show intro and the show outro. Then we have an episode intro, and the episode intro is, hi, welcome back to the episode. I'm Jürgen, welcome to this podcast. Last week we talked about X, this week we're moving from X and we're going on to Y. So it's an introduction that tells them who I am because might be the first time the listener's there. And it also kind of makes it clear it's a series. So you know how on TV, the series, sometimes they start off with um, last week on 24, and they kind of have a one minute synopsis of what went on so that you kind of, oh yeah, I remember that. And then kind of it seamlessly goes on to the new episode. And then at the end they say, and next week, stay tuned for, so that you want to do that in your podcast as well. Because as Zoe mentioned earlier, it is a series. Then after the intro, you get into the meat of it. And the meat, you really break down into three sections. And it's kind of, what are we going to talk about? But the first section is the why. Why is this important? Why should you care? Why should you listen? So it's all about providing the benefits to the listener of spending their time with you right there and then. And then you move on to the second section, with, which is, okay, what's this all about? What is it specifically? And then the third section is, now how do I do it? And that might be step one, step two. So does that sound familiar? Because this presentation is structured exactly like this. And then the fourth part is what's next. And the what's next is made up of the sign off with a call to action. So the call to action could be a number of things. The call to action might be subscribe to the podcast. The call to action might be go visit our website because we've got show notes and links to the things that we talked about in the episode. The call to action might be, if you're advertising on it, that might be the place where you say, go and check out our sponsor because they've got a special offer or whatever. And you give them the URL or, or the place where they can check out the sponsor. The call to action might be, go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review if you really enjoy this podcast. Or it might be as simple as, come back next week and listen again. And then the next part of the what's next, and there's a spelling mistake there, is what's in the next episode. <laughs> so that's, no, before the outro, you actually say, okay, in the next, because the show outro is, is the standard one. The show outro will say, you know, you've been listening to Jürgen's podcast. Thanks for spending your time with us. We really appreciate it. If you like this podcast, go leave a review and check out this website, this is where you'll find the show notes, something like that. Um, but the episode outro, you'll say, in the next episode, I'm going to go even 
deeper into talking about ideal client or ideal listener and describe that empathy map in more detail. So that's kind of, we've talked about the empathy map today. In the next episode, I'm gonna unpack that even more so that people can relate. Okay, that's a series and if I'm interested, I will sort of check and come back again for the next episode. And then also, where can they find you online? So that's always a good place that, you know, connect with people, join the discussion on a Facebook group or something like that. So, you know, Mark and I had a conversation over the break there about community and how important community is to podcasts. So it's one way to really build a community. So, um, you know, you can use that spot there to say, go and check out our community at that or come and, come and participate in the conversation that's going on there. And then say goodbye in your own special way. So the important thing there, again, is the structure is consistent. You've got the same intro, show intro and show outro. Your episode intro should be fairly consistent in the way you do it. And the sign off should be real clear. So in, um, in Nova Buzz, I always say, um, be awesome and keep innovating. That's my sign off every episode. And in Tales of Marketing Transformation, I say, let's make marketing human again, every episode. So it's kind of, there's all that consistency. So they're just little things. So that's the episode structure. Then in terms of style, so style are things like, are you going to be telling a story? Are you going to be doing a monologue that's a lesson about something? Are you going to be doing an interview with somebody else? Are you going to have a panel discussion? So there's a whole range of things that you could do. So you need to decide what's the podcast going to be? What's the episode style going to be? And are you going to mix it up? Um, then we get on to topics and titles. So that's about developing the content. So that really comes from what you did earlier with the ideal listener and what their needs and wants are and what their aspirations are. So you have a list of topics from that and then scheduling the plan. And batching is something that I like to talk about a lot. I'll be very brief about that this time. No batching is you don't need to do one episode and then publish and then wait till next week and do it again. If you've got five or six or four or eight episode ideas, set aside a half day or a day, come to the recording studio or go to wherever you record and do the whole lot in one go and then you can edit them, and then you've got eight weeks. If you do a weekly podcast, you've got eight weeks worth of podcasts. You can schedule them, and you can forget about it for eight weeks. So you don't have to put yourself under pressure to, oh, I've got to do another podcast this week. So batching is really a good idea. Step four, the recording. I just ask if... Oh, yeah. Quick wait, but I'll forget. <laughs> uh, because I'd like to interview people, I think before I would even say I have a podcast, I would do several interviews, and that would be my batch. So mm. I can say next week, that would be yes a good idea. It seems to That's me. that definitely is a good idea. Do, you do that, or I do do that. Yeah. yeah. So I've got, as I said, I've got eight or so recorded that. You know, it will take me to almost the end of September now. I do two a week. So now let's have some fun with recording. Woo! Okay, so what we're up to in step, step four is we're going to be looking at the next page, which is the podcast recording checklist, just on the opposite side of the one that you were just looking at before. And this enables to give you a step-by-step -step plan. Of course, your circumstances might be teensy bit different, but generally this is the plan on how it goes. You usually think about, okay, how am I going to record this? Think about, okay, I've already gone through my plan. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge at the one that I've, I got from this, uh, this workshop might be helpful. Um, and going through the step-by-step -step process. I'm not going to go through each end of these one by one because I'm conscious of time, but these um, checklists I use for myself and my clients whenever I organize a plan to do a whole bunch in one go, the batching method that Jürgen was just talking about. You know, I set for myself a Sunday. I work on, I work on weekends because no one bothers me. <laughs> um, and I set the Sunday afternoon, I get myself um, a podcasting checklist. I get ready, get all set, and then tick off them one by one 
there's little um, descriptions under each step that go through a bit of the process and things that you can think about. Of course, if you practice you know, enough times, you'll be able to get to this level of uh, consistency. But having that checklist, being able to think, okay, I've set Sunday afternoon. I know I need to record about six different episodes. Okay, let's go through the list and figure out what we're doing. And and make sure that you actually test your recording software before you record two and a half hours worth of stuff is a good recommendation. Not one that I've done personally, of course. You mean you record and listen back to it? Yes, so yeah, just two minutes or something just oh, to okay. check how you sound and how you would go about it and not wait two and a half hours of actual talking and realize that you weren't recording the entire time. So don't do that. <laughs> but the reason I want to bring your attention to this checklist is even though you may have practiced something over and over again, you can forget things. Jürgen was telling me this before we started the workshop that he forgot to move his microphone close to his face. And I used the checklist. And to use the checklist. So, of course, it's not entirely fallible, but it's a good thing to have in front of you when you're about to do, you know, when you're about to do something. So, let's go through a little bit of the recording. We've already talked about the physical items that you need. You know, laptop, microphone, good. Now, the software, we talked about Audacity. You can use other programs such as Adobe Audition. You're gonna hit me with another one that I've forgotten. Deep Silver. Yeah. Deep Need examples. <laughs> okay, you're gonna no help. But <laughs> when it comes to software, they're all <laughs> when it comes to software, they're all expensive, but they essentially all do the same thing. And it's because you're here at Podcasting 101, a great place to get started is the Audacity software. Hit record, get going. That's all you need to worry about that so far. So scheduling, when it comes to come to figuring out the time that you need to record, um, um, does anyone use um, online, uh, online calendar scheduling? So say for example, does anyone have a Google calendar? Um, who has diaries or paper calendars? Yes, so I love you guys. <laughs> I can't do it myself, but I love you, <laughs> love, your, love you type of people. But being able to schedule in time, always schedule in more than you think you're gonna need. So as you said, um, when you asked about the, the amount of time that you would have for a podcast, if you think, okay, I'm going to stick to um, 20 minutes. Okay, give yourself a little bit of time around that. You're gonna need time to prepare. You're gonna need time to go through the checklist. So give yourself maybe an hour. You might not use the whole hour, but that hour is there set aside in case things go terribly wrong, you've got that hour to fix it. And with that scheduling, if you're wanting to batch, as Jürgen said, multiple podcast episodes at a time, make sure you give your time accordingly. My rule um, when working with clients and when using it myself, I give myself an extra 60% of time. So if I'm going to be recording for half an hour, I give myself Math, no, don't do math. I give myself, sorry, if I'm gonna film, if I'm gonna film or record for half an hour, I give myself an hour, just in case. That's how, I, how long I think I'm gonna be recording for. Or for those who are able to record in their homes or in their offices where they have full reign of that space, give yourself an afternoon, you know, block everyone off and do it. Now for, um, if you're interested in recording outside of a studio space, of course, as Mark is the example here today, that you can record whenever, wherever. It's just making sure that you have um, a quiet space to, sh to record, you've got access, and if you know a few techniques about sound dampening is the best thing, which I won't go to in too in depth today, but if you want to record anywhere, you can. Just make sure there's no whirring mowers or anything in the background. Toilets, kids, kids are his big one. Well, I'm sure kids are lovely, but they scream. Just saying. <laughs> and so that's what I want to, in regards to studio consideration. So you don't need to record in a studio. The reason why the professionals do it is because you get a clean sound. There's less background noise. But if your um, background noise is sufficient or, you know, you, listen, you let a friend listen, don't listen it to yourself because you're going to be worried about how you sound compared to your others. But if you, get to a, if you send it to a friend or a family member and they listen to it and they can listen to the podcast and don't pick up any strange sounds in the background, then most of the time you'll be okay. But when I think consider a studio stitch, studio considerations, when I was um, leading some of you guys just over in the studio over there, um, I was surprised that you were shocked at the price, but the price to rent out that studio per hour is sixteen fifty an hour. Now, for other places, and especially you guys in radio would probably be able to attest, that renting out a studio could be, what, 200 an hour minimum? 
So the reason that it is $16.50 to rent out that studio an hour for your needs is because we are a community-based organization. We want to give you guys the opportunity to record. So if you are interested, hit me up afterwards. There'll be a link on screen where you can book in a time and you'll be all good to go. And you'll have access to the equipment for the needs. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But the most important thing about all of this is making sure you practice. Don't be surprised that if you give yourself an hour and you say, okay, I'm gonna three, you know, record three podcasts. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna blow this out of the water. And you get to the end of that hour and you're like, I haven't even finished setting up. Don't panic. It is your first time. You are practicing. And when creating content, you're gonna need to practice a few times to get it ready and to get it right. So don't panic. <laughs> so don't panic. <laughs> And do you also mean practice verbally what you're going to say without yes. recording? Or yes. Yes. Mean... A bit, bit, bit of both, depending on how much um, bandwidth you can deal with and the energy that you're doing it. Um, I wouldn't recommend going through the whole thing, um, just like whole thing without recording it if you're going to put the effort of going through the whole thing. But say, for example, if you want to just go over your, um, you know, your template and, no, you know, voice out the notes in your head or, you know, say it out loud of, okay, we're going to welcome everyone. We're going to talk about chocolate and chili and how the two do go together. Yeah. Or, you know, work through it and... Yeah, not to the level that you would if you were actually recording it, but being able to practice and even using that as your test record is also a good one too. So you can get your levels and you can get everything like that. Now, did I press the wrong button? No, I did. Good. All right, making sure we're moving along smoothly. Um, I want you guys to look at editing and publishing. So of course, we've talked about the software, the hosting platforms. And as Jürgen mentioned before, you can actually schedule your podcast to go out um, at a certain time. Not all platforms offer this service, but you know, make sure when you do the research of the ones that are on that page, check out the ones if they have scheduling podcasts as an option. And when I say scheduling, it's more of a, you've uploaded it to the platform, you put in all the SEO details, you've given a title, description, all the lovely things, and it's not going to be released to the public until you say so until you give it a time and say, all right, I want this to be released at 6 a.m. on a Monday morning to make it look like I am prepared. Yeah. So being able to utilize that to your advantage, I would highly recommend it and making sure that you do that research. All right, editing considerations and techniques. Editing, one of the worst nightmares of people doing anything to do with video and audio, but don't, don't panic. The reason we do editing of a podcast is because um, you may have said something wrong, you may have hiccuped, um, uh, the door may have swung open and your kids ran in, broke a few things and ran back out. Probably not a good idea to leave that in your podcast talking about business, maybe. So when using editing techniques, using Audacity to, um, using the tutorial I mentioned about being able to edit bits out, delete bits is what you need to do with your podcasts if you want to be professional. Now, the reason that we're not giving you a full in-depth tutorial on how to do this tonight is because there's almost so much time. But for most podcasts, there's been plenty of podcasts out there that don't require any editing because, and I'm sure most of you have done this before, you've had a good talk for a good five minutes, you, you press the end record button and you're done. You don't need to worry about editing. Then that's great. You've got a podcast episode to put up and ready to go. But if you don't, there are plenty of tutorials to get you started. You're just going to need a little bit of time to edit that. Yes. Can you pause when you're recording? Can yes. You pause and then yes. Start yes. Yeah, so there's, the there's a couple of things. So, so the recording software is just like a tape recorder, if you remember the tape yep. recorder. So it's <laughs> fast forward, you know, okay, record, <laughs> record, pause. Everything's there. The buttons look the same. Um, so you can pause. The other thing you can do, this does require editing, you can just stop for a moment to gather your thoughts and then continue. And then, you know, so you'll have a long pause in the recording, but you can just cut that bit out. If you, like today, I coughed in the middle of an interview um, and I just made a note of the time and kept going. And when I came back to um, save the recording, I just went to that time slot and cut out my bit of coughing. So it didn't disturb anything. 
Yeah. And because it's so, um, it's a lot easier to get away with cutting sections out in audio than it is for video, um, it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to do the same. So before I finish off, I just want to mention about music, intros, outros, and mixing. Whoa. So when it comes to music, um, have you guys listened to a podcast where they have some music underneath when they talk? It can give you an air of professionality, and I'm going to get you guys to look again at the, um, our YouTube channel where we have tutorials and places to get your music so you're not copyright flagging and you're not stealing professionals' music, the professionals that have a lot of money that can, <laughs> that can yell at you for using their music and inappropriately. But, and inappropriately. So oh. there's something like you can get <coughs> photos, shutter yes. stock photos. Yes. It's sort of a shutter stock. So don't worry, there are plenty of options out there and we have those on the side as well. Um, intros and outros, you can get um, professionals to record, like Jürgen said, about getting someone else to record them. You know, professional voice actors going onto Fiverr or Upwork or other places like that that do quick projects. You can get them to record a intro outro for you. You give them a script, you say, say it like this, here's any pronunciations you need to worry about, go ahead, break a leg. And then you get your final files together and then you can easily put them at the start and the end of each of your podcast episodes. Of course, you can do these yourself, it's quite easy. Again, tutorials on the YouTubes. And and <laughs> I'm just curious about intros and outros. Mm -hmm. How successful are they having singing girls on the front and at the end to attract people to <laughs> It, dep I, it depends on the time. It's very American, and I really struggle here in Australia. With that. <laughs> I, I think it needs, you know, n for me, it needs to be appropriate to who your audience is and to, you know, your brand of your podcast. Mm -hmm. So Sorry. I've I'm working with a voice coach at the moment, who coaches performers as well as business people that present about voice and she wants to start a podcast and I suggested to her that she actually sings her intro because I think it's fitting for her brand but I wouldn't suggest it to most people. Oh, no. I mean I think some of us have a lovely singing voice as Jürgen I think we could pull it off but if I'm talking about you know the, um, getting people to talk about the Italian language and I'm just being like oh I could probably put them off a little bit starting off with it but hey if it works it works so in regards to um, your intros and outros you can try different ones per episode of course that's going to take you a bit more time but there's plenty of episodes or sorry plenty of podcasts that you know test out an intro see how it works and see how many people listen and if they change it do they get a bit of listenership or not it, it's entirely up to you because you have the power because it's your content and you're creating it and mixing is just another term of putting audio on top of audio, rain, no time, no, <laughs> um, and making it sound differently and making some sounds louder than others and softer, for an example. <laughs> um, and you can do this using Audacity. It does take a little bit of practice to get used to it, but again, tutorials are online. Now, blogs and show notes. notes. So we get, if you were recording now and you had that rain sound, so does Audacity allow you to pinpoint that rain sound and decrease the volume? Yes, it does, it does do, do that. that. Probably not effectively as some apps that does that do cost a lot more money, mm -hmm. for example. But I've run it for a fair few professional gigs where I've just used the denoise mechanic that's in the actual app, and it does a pretty decent job. It can alter the sound and quality of your audio, so just be wary about how heavily you're using it. So again, if you're you know, running into the rain with a microphone, it may not be able to help you with that, but say something like this where there's a bit of you know, spot rain up there, then it'll be able to get that out later. Now, blog and show notes. When you're listening to a podcast, it's just audio, but how do you get that podcast? It's because it is online and online is run <coughs> by robots and robots need words. That, that's my convoluted way of thinking about it. But essentially, having supporting content, so supporting content, so it's not your main podcast, but it's the stuff that comes along with it, such as blogs and show notes, allows people to easily click on links that you've mentioned, um, find resources if you've mentioned anything particularly memorable. <laughs> And it also allows people to find you online using SEO and Google. So if you're able to outline what you've talked about on an episode, 
link to anyone who's talked on the episode if you've had guests or interviews and making sure that you you know link out to places where they're relevant so if you have any sponsors making sure that you know check the show notes for our discount code zoe360 buy our stuff for example you send people to the show notes which can be in your description of your actual podcast or on a separate link to your own website bring in that lovely seo traffic but i highly recommend when you're creating podcasts to think about this type of thing and put it into blogs into words again there are a lot more heavy duty tutorials online they'll be able to walk you through the process because we are podcasting 101 today we won't go too in depth today but what we're going to do is Jürgen is going to talk about launching and momentum, and then we're going to go straight into Q&As. Yeah. So the launch of the podcast is kind of, it's like, um, you know, you've written a book and you've got to get it out to the public and have people find out about it. So that's where we're at now with our podcast. So the first thing is the directory. So we've mentioned things like iTunes or Apple Podcasts, as it's now called, um, Google Podcasts. Stitcher is not really a directory, it's an app, but you have to submit there as well. Um, sorry, not St Stitcher is a directory. Um, uh, Spotify. Yeah. Spotify is, is the app I'm thinking of. Um, and there's a whole lot of other directories that you should go as well. But those four that I've mentioned, um, you um, are really important to submit to. And as, as we said earlier, most of the good hosts will make that easy for you. Just click a button to go out there. There is a, a wait time. Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts often take up to a week. Um, Spotify can take a while, although I launched one today and it was on Spotify in seconds, which surprised me a little, but Spotify are undergoing a lot of changes because I don't know if everybody's familiar with Spotify. So the music app, they have, so it's a music listening app basically. You can subscribe there and you can listen to any kind of music um, on subscription. It's a subscription service for music. But they've invested heavily in podcasting. So they're betting their whole business on the future of podcasting. So you can now go in and use Spotify to listen to podcasts, to subscribe to podcasts. And so for me, as a podcast publisher, I think it's a really good place to submit a podcast to because it'll be found. So the directories, it, it's like if you think of a website, you've got to put your website into the Google search engines and it's probably less important the other search engines because Google is so dominant. In the podcasting space, iTunes, or Apple Podcasts is the dominant search engine, but, or it's the biggest search engine that's probably nowhere near as dominant as Google in the web space. So Google Podcasts, definitely, you should submit there. Spotify, I would definitely suggest that. And Stitcher is the old one that um, was for Android. So the Apple Podcasts app is for the Apple phones. Um, the other thing that's happening with directories is Google are actually playing with voice search. You know, if you do a search on Google and you get a few websites come up and then there's the videos go across and there's actually the YouTube there related to the search and you can actually just click on it and it starts playing that YouTube. I haven't seen it for a while now. When they first announced it, I actually saw it come up a few times where there are some podcasts there with a player embedded. So on the search page, you could actually click on the player and it would play the podcast. So they're obviously still playing with it because I haven't seen it now for a little while, but they are playing with voice search. So that's coming along as well. So this is all about getting into those directories. And there's a whole bunch of secondary directories that, you know, I can give you lists of those that we, we go through a process that we spend a whole day typically when we launch a new podcast of going through all these secondary directories. Half of them nobody's ever heard of, but it's good to be in them because it just means that you've spread your tentacles as widely as you can. The other thing we do with a launch is go out to social media. So send it out to all the places you're on social media. And again, referring back to what we did earlier with the 
empathy map. So where are you likely to find your ideal listener? You know, if it's a business that might be more on LinkedIn, if it's a um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, there might be groups that have that interest in Facebook. So you would, you know, you, you know, because you're interested, you might be actually involved in those groups. So you would post to those groups and say, hey, I've just launched my podcast. Here's the teaser. Go listen. If you like what you hear, subscribe. So that's really important. And that's why the trailers are really important. So we always do a trailer for a new podcast because that gives people the opportunity to record. Usually they're about a minute or two minutes, like Zoe mentioned. So they can record just that very short intro. There's no real barrier to do that. And also you do need an audio recording to do the submission to the directories. So you can't submit to the directories without having an audio recording attached to the podcast within your host. Otherwise they say it's an invalid RSS feed to use the technical term. Are there any limitations or incompatibilities between like host and the directory? No. Like Mishka and Spotify or whatever? No. The, the only difference is some of them um, aren't as easy. Some of them don't offer as much, um, you know, one click button submit. Um, to all the directories. Wooshka, I think, does um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, just a one-click button. Uh, Omni Studio does those three also. Okay, so you just push it from there and then... Yeah, you basically, you, you're on your podcast um, yeah. management page and you just click the button and it goes, it l launches that page and then you have to, it kind of says that it confirms that everything's okay and then you click it and then there might be a, some of them might have a step where they'll send an email to the um, email that's attached to that podcast and ask you to confirm so it's like when you subscribe somewhere yeah verify it and then then it's done and if it's not a one-step process they'll give you a tutorial how to do it because they've got to make it easy yeah so the, you know, most of them will, will say, do those three and do Stitcher as well. Stitcher's a manual process because of the way that app is set up, but they'll have all of the um, directories, uh, all of the hosts give you instructions how to do it. Yeah. And, and most of them that I've seen are really good instructions. So it just walks you through step by step. Then the other directories that we do, so there's probably about another 20 that we do, um, there's, if you go to some of the um, podcast school or um, what's Corey, Corey, Corey surname now. Anyway, there's a, there's a bunch of, if you just go submit to podcast. So there's, yeah, so there's different places where you can check and they'll give you instructions. And some of them are as simple as the RSS feed that Zoe mentioned, which is just a URL address that you get from your host and you go on to a particular page, paste that code into the box, click the I am not a robot button and then click submit and it's done. And step seven is momentum. So once you started, just keep showing up, keep doing it. You know, if you're really serious about podcasting, you're just gonna have to keep doing it um, because there's nothing worse than having those seven episodes and then crickets and it just sits there. So it really is consistency. And as you keep doing more and more, you know, Mark mentioned that he's done 51 episodes. Now things start to happen when you get to those numbers. People start to pay more attention if you've got 50 episodes as opposed to, you know, there's a podcast there with 10 episodes because they always worry, you know, how long is that going to keep going for? So you've got to keep up that momentum, um, growing your audience. As I said, we're, you know, we're a bit pressed for time. We're actually really pressed for time. So I want to do questions. So you want to take steps to grow your audience, talk about your podcast, talk about it in social media, talk about it in the groups you're involved in, send it out in your email newsletters, uh, send it out in other email marketing you do, promote it wherever you can and collect reviews. So there's the summary and be consistent and always deliver value to your audience. And what now? Q&A. Who's, who's your host? 
Um, does all the sort of hashtag stuff work? Or Good or question, <laughs> yes. So when you upload to the hosts, so the good hosts, I know Wooshka does this, I know Omni does this, um, will have a section where you can put in keywords yep. and tags. And so, and the principle is exactly the same as in the SEO. So for example, in, in my Innova Buzz, I always use innovation because that's what the, it's about. I always use marketing because it's about innovation and marketing. And then today, for example, we had the sales trainer on so I um, had put tags on about sales and sales training and a couple of others yeah every time you usually upload a podcast it'll come up with a whole list of things that it wants you to fill out mm. so title description but also tags and meta tags is another form um, in the SEO world if any of you are familiar with that is the list of words that are associated with your um, podcast but isn't essentially what you've said in the description or the title mm. so if you're able so you've talked about you know for you, so for example, you talked about sales and he mentioned a specific program, but you, t you haven't linked to it or anything in your description, highly recommend that you do. But if you haven't, you can put that in your tags and you'll be able to be found that way. Mm. Yeah, I was just going to ask with that, is there a way to search sort of what popular versions to know which terms to use? Google. I know that's yeah, like annoying. That's like, yeah, no, so it's, yeah. yeah, just use Google the same sort of way. Yeah. Do you have any particular... Yeah, just use Google the same sort of way. Yeah. Do you, you have any can't do it within the program? Do you have any particular tools that you use? I just use Google and yeah, Google, Google um, you know, when you type it in and then it just comes up. Yeah. Um, and then I highly recommend just using that. Yeah, sure. And if I come up with any tools, I'll let you know. Mm. That. Yeah, sure. And if I come up with any tools, I'll let you know. Mm. So on that, um, mm -hmm. I use a website, um, yeah. Uber Shower keyword. Sorry, what was that called? Yeah. Uber Shower. Oh, it's, Uber called, Shower. it's called yeah. Uber Suggest. Yeah. Sorry, the word Uber and Suggest. Boom. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, that one. So is there's um, the first one is Uber, Uber Suggest, Suggest is um, Keyword, keyword Finder. So most of those you can Google and find them. Um, and then yeah, Keyword Finder is an extension, I believe, as well as its own site. Yeah, I think it's one of those two. I was going to do, because I want to be local, feedback link to you know, the city of Greenwich, along to the Surf Coast Shire, to start, is, that, is that really necessary or is it long Yeah, if, like if you interview me and I talk to you about uh, Creative Geelong has a wonderful podcast recording studio, then you can link to that because you're doing them a service um, and we've discussed it, so it's relevant. But if you do it every single episode, it can yeah. be can denigrate you on SEO. If you're constantly, you know, backlinking to the Geelong, Geelong Council website, and it's not really doing anything, you're just doing it for the sake of it. It can it can do nothing, or it can impede you. Is there one of those two options? So if it's mentioned, and it would, one thing I definitely recommend, and Neil Patel is someone I follow, highly recommend that if you do a podcast and Creative Geelong is mentioned, send them an email and just say, mm. hey, let you know. We've mentioned you in the podcast, a link to you. Why don't you give us a share? That's a, Yeah, that's actually a really good suggestion. So we've got um, one of my questions in the Novabuzz podcast is, is there a resource that you really like and you use most often? Now, sometimes people say, well, pen and paper or my daily journal or things like that. Sometimes they'll say, um, what came up today? Evernote. I use Evernote, which is an app for kind of taking notes on your phone or any device or computer. Um, so one of the things that we would do in that case, we would link to Evernote so that people can go and check it out. And when we post on the social media, we'll actually tag Evernote and say that we mentioned Evernote. You know, we talked about Evernote as a, a great tool for note taking in this podcast episode. And that actually gets comments from some of those companies and they'll actually come back and share the episode or comment. And that's how you definitely grow on social media with traction. Because if you don't, if you feel like that you're not getting anywhere when it comes to, you know, when you're starting out, like Jürgen said, the first 10 episodes, people are like, cool, go you, well done. But once you get to that consistency of 50, 200, whatever number I'm on, um, that consistency, you're able to reach out to those podcasts or email you know, I think recently I mentioned um, Canva was one thing. I, I was a pr Australian 
um, program that I highly recommend. I have a lot of tutorials about it, and I mentioned them on my podcast, and I had a link, and I sim- you know I did the ne- Neil Patel idea of just sending out that email, just say, hey guys, just to let you know, I'm a big fan. Um, just put you on my podcast episode. Here's a link. In your experience, then, is there a um, a certain type of voice or a certain type of topic that works better? So if I was to talk scientific stuff, I could get away with it and not enough to turn on an English accent. But if I was telling a bedtime story in the same scientific kind of way, it probably wouldn't work so well and probably be a bit of a train wreck with that. So I'd say that mainly be your aesthetic. Because, huh? well, it doesn't really... I'm trying to make, we're trying to figure out what your question is, but in well, re- is certain, I'm trying to make, we're trying to figure out what your question is, but in well, re- is I think my opinion on this, and I mean, I don't know whether you agree with this, but I think be yourself, mm-hmm. use the voice. So what I like to do, and, and this is a real challenge, and I know from Zoe's video um, course the other day, which you were in as well. I struggle with doing video, even though I'm, I can get on a microphone and talk for ages. But the thing to do is imagine a real person that you're talking to, and that's your ideal listener in this case. Mm-hmm. And then just have a conversation with that person. So whether it's a bedtime story or whether you're giving them a scientific tutorial on, on some complicated subject, just you know, be aware. So if, if you're talking to me as John, then just use that voice. So if I want to put on an American accent for a while, it's, it's going to drain me because I have to really concentrate to do that. <laughs> Sorry, yes. This is more for both of you, I guess. You do videos, you do the podcast. Can you do both at the same time? Like yes. record, you know, like I can't see why I wouldn't be able to do that. Yes, you can definitely do both. And I and I'm and I'm in a good example of that where I rip audio straight from my videos um, to put onto podcasts because again, mark attraction. I want to get that ability. And yes, I'm on YouTube, but I'm also on all the podcast platforms as well. And I probably don't put all of my videos um, on podcasts because one's you know, it's for example specifically about tutorials, you probably need the visual there. But when, you know, if you're putting in the effort to put in a microphone and you feel pretty and you're putting in that effort enough to record the video as well, then I recommend it. I've got workshops on that, by the way. But in regards to podcast, using audio is still a good way of going about it. It's so, just if you've got the opportunity to do both, you can. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can do video, it's well worth doing that if you're comfortable in front of camera. And then take the audio, as Zoe said, you can take the audio out and make a podcast with the audio part, and you've got the video as well. Podcast with just audio is a lot easier. Obviously, you don't need the camera. You don't need to worry about, you know, you've got this messy office stuff behind you. Nobody knows that on the podcast. But as soon as you go on camera, they'll see that. So you've got to try and clean that up or have a nice backdrop. So that's that's the only thing. It's, it's easier just to do audio, but if you can, it would be good to do video as well. Now we actually turn ours around. We generate video from our audio and there's a way to do that. So it's, it's a way to get your audio on YouTube with some graphic images. So what that, mean, what that means is you can take advantage of both the channels, YouTube channel with audio. Similar to what you've already discussed, how do you use podcasting in your whole marketing mix with Facebook Lives, Instagram TV, blogs, YouTube? Like, it's, is it just one more to add to it, or do you not do something because now you are doing podcasts? Um, in regards to cohesion, is what you're asking. Um, I've got um, skills in regards to strategy and marketing strategy. So, in regards to adding podcasting on it can seem a bit much okay I'm adding another thing onto marketing when you know I do it at night while the kids are asleep and I'm trying to be quiet so it can seem a bit daunting but say for example if you're already you know doing videos doing a podcast is an easy next step in regards to your marketing it's more of 
a creative outlet for small businesses. And I imagine most of you guys in the room are small to medium business size, where um, you're doing it as more of a creative outlet to be able to reach people um, and add, add that into your marketing schedule and programming as opposed to another thing that you need to add on. So in regards to content creation, if you're you know, spending that one day a month on your Instagram or creating stuff for Facebook or however you guys market at the moment, being able to add podcasts on top of that isn't that would, would be a little bit of a leap, but nothing that you wouldn't be able to keep into your rhetoric at the time. And because um, I'm sure Yogan will mention this as well, but I definitely for my clients, I highly recommend repurposing. So when you're doing a 20 minute podcast, there's probably, you know, three minutes when you're talking about a specific subject or a specific thing, you can take out that separate piece of audio, whack it up onto Facebook and YouTube, make it look all pretty. There you go. You've got another piece of content that you can add to drive people to your podcast, then to your website and hopefully give you money. But you can add that on top of what you're already doing if you play it smart. And just to add, to what Zoe said, again, you know, the exercise about the ideal listener or the, who the listener is, we do that exercise right at the beginning of any marketing strategy. So who's the ideal client and where are they likely to hang out? Um, so that gives you some direction in terms of where should you invest time? So should you be on Instagram video or should you go on Facebook Live? So I've, I've never done an Instagram video because I don't think my ideal client is there. Um, I, have, <laughs> I have done Facebook Live, but I've stopped doing them because again, I don't think my ideal client is there. And, and you know, Facebook in particular has become a very noisy platform. So the, um, you know, that's just not. So I think you know, really determining where are your clients and where you find them, and then that'll um, give you the direction for your marketing. But Zoe makes a great point about repurposing because if you do a video in particular, you can take the audio and make that into a podcast. You can take a transcript of what you've said and turn that into a blog post. You can take bits of that transcript and add a photo to it and turn it into a bunch of social media posts. Um, what else can you do? You can take audio clips of it or Actually, what we do on Instagram from the podcast is take a one minute audio clip and turn it into what's called a, an audiogram, which actually gives it some graphics behind it so that it's a little video, a one minute video that goes on Instagram. So, you know, using the content and getting it out into a whole lot of different channels so that people can come back and find it. For me, the beauty of the podcast is that people can consume it while they do other things. So people listen while they're commuting, while they're driving the car, while they're doing housework or gardening. Um, I listen to podcasts when I'm on the stationary bike because I find that as boring as anything. So it's great to have something interesting to listen to while I'm doing that. So you know, people do it while they're doing other things. Whereas reading a blog post, they have to actually concentrate on that. Watching a video, they have to concentrate on that. So you know, the, the barrier to doing that is a little bit higher because they've got to commit to that. And in regards to repurposing content, I highly recommend giving yourself a goal of, um, say, three months, six months, even a year um, in regards to when you're starting a podcast or when you're starting, you know, any project that requires that consistency of creating content over a period of time. If you're able to give yourself a goal of, okay, in three months, of you know weekly podcasts, I'm going to see how I do in three months. Have I gotten more followers online? Have I gotten more email leads, ROI, all the business stuff? Have I you know talked to more people? Have you know more people stopped me in the street because people actually recognise my voice or my face? I'm surprised that that's even happened to me here in Geelong, where you know before I started actively doing podcasts and video, I would be like, cool, people know me, I met you, great, but people would actually stop me on the streets like, so. Zoe, and I'm like, hi, have, do I know you? I'm not going to pretend to, mm, okay. But in regards to being able to penetrate that market, especially for any solo traders, um, sorry, solo traders, people who are working on their own and you are the face of your brand, if you're able to give yourself that goal of, okay, in six months, I plan to reach, you know, these general milestones, but I also plan to, you know, actively be, have, you know, 
what was it, 24 episodes of my podcast up. So even if I stop there, I don't keep going, I've still got 25 pieces of content that I can use in the future that I can help people with. I don't keep going, I've still got 25 pieces of content that I can use in the future that I can help people with. That's an interesting question, and it's kind of a little bit like how long is a piece of string. Um, my suggestion is as frequently as you can maintain that momentum. So if that's weekly, that would be good. If it's monthly, that's fine too, as long as you can keep that frequency up. Sorry, this might be a dumb question. Right. But, you know, if you're going to be interviewing someone, are you going to be bringing them into the studio? Either way. So when it comes to interviews, which is definitely Jürgen's forte, um, there's multiple ways of doing it. You can have them in person, so both have a microphone, both share the same microphone, talky-talky. Um, Jürgen's got uh, plenty of ideas in regards to international or using Skype, Zoom, all those online platforms. Yes, the quality can diminish, in, except you're using a special yeah. premium paid one, but um, it doesn't. you can have someone, as long as someone else can be as long as it can be recorded at some point during a conversation m most platforms are able for you to do it